Здравствуйте, Welcome back to Russian Through Propaganda. Today we're adding possessive pronouns, uh, and these are essentially adjectives in that they, they can be used to modify nouns. The only problem is that their endings are somewhat different from the adjectives we learned yesterday. So we can think of them as special adjectives, or as we'll refer to these in the book, special modifiers. We'll have a little uh, bundle of words that act in this way, right, essentially as adjectives but their endings may be a little bit weird, or at least different from the uh, adjectival endings we're used to seeing. Uh, we can also call these pronouns in the sense that they can stand all by themselves in the place of a noun. So let's first see how they can be used as adjectives. We can say things like maya kniga, maya kniga, my book, right? Uh, a possessive adjective to express possession, right? My book. Uh, or, but let's imagine talking about books, and we can say things like Maya Novaya Atvaya Starea, right? Mine is new while yours is old, right? Speaking of book, and here the Maya, uh, right, mine is standing in for a book. Maya Kniga Novaya Atvaya Kniga Starea. Uh, if we look at our first propaganda poster, and yes, this is a real poster. This is one people always ask me, is this for real? Yes, as far as I know, this is real. Um, I think it's actually quite an early poster. I think it's from the early 30s, if memory serves. Um, at any rate, uh, it reads, Nash ultimatum zroslin, right? Our ultimatum to adults. And uh, the full version of the poster goes on with the, this long list of uh, demands, right, that um, adults not smoke in the presence of children and so forth. So these are young pioneers. We can tell by their red, um, their red uh, uh, neckties that they're in the, they are pianieri. By the way, there's a, a plural form, pianier is the singular, and then the plural will be pianieri. We see that u ending, but again, we won't be using those uh, actively in the textbook until we get to book two. So let's look over these uh, possessive adjectives or possessive pronouns. Uh, these can be used to answer the question word che, che, which means whose, and it itself is a special um, modifier, right? Again, special modifier means that the endings are adjectival, but they're going to be a little bit different than the adjective endings we learned yesterday. Um, so, for example, we can ask uh, about a masculine item, right? Let's say we're pointing to a... Um, a computer, right, which is masculine. We would ask, che, che, right, or the full version, che at the computer, right, at the is the pointing word, che computer, right, che at the computer. But if we we're pointing to something uh, feminine, like a book, right, we would use cha, cha. Now, if we look at that form, we can see that it's feminine, or we can at least guess that. But of course, it's the ending is different than uh, you know aya, than you know the adjectival endings we learned yesterday. So we'd say cha at the kniga, cha at the kniga, or neuter would be chua, chua, as in um, whose easy chair, chua at the kriasla, chua kriasla. Okay, and to answer those questions, right? Whose is this? We would. Uh, right, we can answer with any number of possessive adjectives or again possessive pronouns. Um, it's mine, it's yours, it's his, hers, it's, theirs, ours, uh, y'alls, or however you choose to say, you guys, you know, however, however you choose to express this you plural in, uh, in uh, whatever your, your spoken English. Um, okay, so let's look over these forms in a table. And again, you see how, uh, well, let's start with. Yeah, right? How do we express uh, possession for yeah, right? For To express my things. The forms are moi, maya, mayo. Moi, maya, mayo. Now, again, if we just simply look at these passively, we can see that they make some kind of sense, right? Uh, we have moi, that's zero ending. And then for the feminine, we're adding an a ah to it. That gives us maya. And for neuter, we're adding essentially an or to it, but we have that ikratke that's giving us the your, my your. Right, so with a bit of reflection, these endings usually make perfect sense. But again, we have to, to use them actively, we're going to have to memorize them. Uh, the next one for t, right, for you singular, yours, uh, 
these forms are going to mirror exactly the forms of moi. And we'll see this going forward, that the first two possessive adjectives, moi and tvoi, are going to work exactly the same. They follow the same pattern. Tvoi, tvoya, tvoyo. Uh, now, the next two also follow the same pattern, the ones for mui and vui, right? So these are going to mean ours and, again, y'alls or uh, you guys is or you or simply your of course would be the correct English. But by the way, in class, uh, I, I often say I often use y'all just kind of for fun. Uh, a lot of people are saying that these days. I'm I was born in the South, so I'm very used to saying it. Uh, I don't feel quite as self conscious using it anymore because it seems like you hear y'all all over the place nowadays. Um, okay, but of course the point is to distinguish between your meaning a t right you singular versus a v you plural. Right. English, of course, has lost that distinction, um, and uh, it's a bit of a shame, right? But it helps explain why words like y'all come into use, right? You all, because they're kind of needed. It's an important distinction to be made. Um, okay, anyway, back to the table. The versions of uh, mui, right, to express possession uh, in the sense of our, we have nash, nasha, nasha. Okay, that makes good sense too. Zero ending for the masculine, ah uh, for feminine, and for neuter, we can't write an unstressed o uh there because of the five-letter spelling rule. So that helps explain why we end up with nasha. Okay, the next set of forms are going to mirror nash, nasha, nasha exactly. We get vash, vasha, vasha, meaning your, uh, right, y'alls, uh, you, 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 your in the plural, right? Okay, the next set of forms. Note the black box. These forms in this meaning are never going to change. They don't, uh, we don't have to worry about gender or anything else. And we're going to return to this topic because it, it gets quite confusing, and you'll see why uh, fairly soon. Uh, you see the footnote there on page 38. Uh, um, first of all, the, this first form is um, yivo, right? It's pronounced somewhat unusually. We've seen this already, yivo. Right when we talked about pronouns, yuvo, 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 that means his. And again, the point here to be made is that if we're using this form, yuvo, in this meaning, right, to mean his, then that Russian word for his, yuvo, is never going to change in any way. The reason this is confusing is, uh, you know, this form happens to coincide with uh, the genitive and also the accusative forms of on, the pronoun, right? So we've seen things things like uh, and then in the next chapter, when we add the accusative, we're going to see that, see that this exact same word, can be the accusative case of uh, he, right? Like English, him, right? Now, in certain situations, that word is going to change uh, form. Uh, more on that later. So for now, let's just, again, make this initial point that the Russian for his is yuvo. It never, ever changes. Uh, now, again, we see this in the table because we don't have to worry about gender, right? Yuvo can refer to something masculine, something feminine, something neuter. And in that sense, it's not really uh, adjectival, right? It, the way we would normally think of a Russian adjective, it's always going to change its endings, uh, its ending to match the word it's modifying. Same thing for her. Yuvo. Ye your, ye your, no change. The word for it is just like his, ye vor, ye vor, ye vor. And for the, the third plural, I ni, right, there or theirs, that'll be ich, 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 right, no change across the board. So let's look at a few examples. Uh, first, asking this question, whose? Uh, che at the stool. Well, we're talking about a table, so let's see some examples with the um, masculine forms. At the moi stall, at the moi stall, at the yivo stall. That's his, this is his table, or that's his table. Okay, now let's switch to feminine. Let's ask, let's ask about a book. Cha at the kniga, cha at the kniga, at the maya kniga, right? That word is changing to uh, reflect the gender. But this is his book, that his will never change, at the Yivo Kniga. Uh, next item, window, right, a neuter. 
Чё это окно? Чё это окно? Это моё окно. Right? That мой is changing to reflect the, the gender. But at the его окно, the его is never changing. By the way, sometimes students get a bit confused. They think that the, the его, right? Or actually, let's take the book example. At the его книга. Sometimes they want to write at the ее книга because they think they need feminine agreement with книга. Right? But again, we're choosing these words его, ее, based on the gender of the possessor, right? So again, it, it's the exact equivalent of English his, that's его, English her, that's ее, right? So those words are reflecting the gender of the, the possessor of the item, not the gender of the item itself. Um, and again, look back at the table, look down the list there in the black box, at the его стол, at the его книга, at the его окно. No change uh, in the word for his. Uh, let's take some other examples. At the наш стол, at the наша книга, at the наша окно. Okay, that word is changing to reflect gender, but her isn't. At the ее стол, at the ее книга, at the ее окно. So let's do a quick exercise and uh, just filling in the right forms. We're going to do this a lot in Russian in first year, unfortunately, right? We just have to learn some new forms, and it's not always very exciting, uh, but we have to start somewhere. Uh, let's maybe go down the columns here uh, in order just to focus on, on a given word, right? Like, let's start with che, right? The question word meaning whose. Uh, now, again, this, these are all special modifiers. They're a bit unusual, so... Uh, refer to the table if you need to as we fill these in. Okay, and as always, we're worried about the gender of the noun we're talking about. We've got to choose the correct form of these uh, possessive adjectives, right? So whose pen is this? Чья это ручка? Чья это ручка? Whose pen is this? Okay, going down the column again. Number two, whose umbrella is this? Чья это зонт? Чья это зонт? Masculine. Whose laundry? Uh, by the way, the word bilio means literally white stuff. And so it kind of reaches back to the day when you would only regularly wash your underclothes, your, your linens, right, which would be white. But today it generally refers to, uh, well, it can mean various things. It can mean laundry. It can mean other things. But uh, we're using it mostly in the sense of laundry. Okay, number three. Uh, so, bilio is neuter, so we'd ask, Чё это бельё? Чё это бельё? Who's laundry? Number four, who's um, backpack? Чей это рюкзак? Masculine. Whose car? Чья это машина? Чья это машина? Feminine. Whose window? Чё это окно? Чё это окно? Okay, whose idea, number seven? Чья это идея? Чья это идея? Feminine. Okay, whose ball is that? Мяч. That's masculine, so we'll ask, Чья это мяч? Чья это мяч? Мяч. Okay, let's do the next uh, column, and uh, you filling in мой. Okay, now let's just ask, uh, right, is, is this thing mine or yours or ours and so forth? Okay, now here, right, we're filling in the pronoun to match the gender of the thing we're talking about, and we've also got to now make the adjective match the gender. Anamaya on moi ano mayo on moi anamaya ano mayo anamaya on Moi. Okay, so uh, that's pretty easy. Now remember the next column, toy, is going to, those forms are going to match perfectly with moi. Uh, this time I'll go back and repeat the question just to get practice. Uh, Чья это ручка? Она твоя? Она твоя? Is it yours? Чья это зонт? Он твой? Он твой? Uh, Чье это белье? Оно твое? Чья это рюкзак? Он твой? Чья это машина? Она твоя? Чье это окно? Оно твое?
А чья это идея? Она твоя? Чей это мяч? Он твой? Now keep in mind, of course, that we don't really have to use this pronoun here, right? In normal Russian, you would just say, uh, чей это мяч? Твой? Right? Uh, but, you know, we're filling in the pronoun in some cases here just to get more practice, just to be seeing these forms as often as we can. So you may notice sometimes in the book we're using sort of the full version of, of an utterance uh, that in spoken language might be truncated somewhat, right? Just avoiding needless repetition and uh, in this case a pronoun that is not necessarily required. Okay, let's do the next column with nash. Uh, right, is it ours? Okay, let's fill in the vash. I won't repeat the question again. Vash, these forms are going to look exactly like nash. Она ваша, он ваш. Оно ваше, он ваш. Она ваша, оно ваш. Sorry, оно ваше, она ваша, он ваш. You may notice the intonation, right, rising on the um, possessive adjective here, because that's kind of the question. Is it yours, right? Yours is the point of the question, so we get the rising intonation. Okay, now, the final three columns, take a moment to reflect here. We're going to be filling in his, hers, theirs. Now, remember, these third-person forms are never going to change. It doesn't matter what they're modifying, what we're talking about, right? They never change. And again, think... Uh, you might want to pencil in in the book here. Yevo means his. That's all there is to it, right? So it reflects the gender of the possessor, not that of the thing possessed. So this is an easy column to fill in. Chaturuchka, ana yevo, right? Is it his? Chetazont, on yevo. Chotabilio, ano yevo, right? Yevo, 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 all down the column. Next column, again, it doesn't matter what we're talking about. Is it hers? Ana yiyo, on yiyo, ano yiyo, 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 yiyo. That's the only way to say hers in Russian. Doesn't matter what we're talking about. Finally, for theirs, same idea. Ana ich, on ich, ano ich, 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 right? Uh, meaning theirs. Will vasha stala nasha. It was yours, it became ours, meaning we've taken it shamelessly and there's nothing you can do about it. Okay, next exercise. Uh, again, let's fill in she and now use uh, some other words, get a bit of review and ask, uh, first of all, whose is this item and what kind of item is it? Uh, for example, she at the telephone. Whose phone is this? Какой он, right? What kind is it, right? Now, remember, all those words in bold there are changing to reflect the gender of the noun we're talking about. Okay, uh, whose car is this? Чья-то машина. What kind of car is it? Какая она? Какая она? Whose ball is this? Note again, we're, we keep using this pointing word, это, right? Just pointing at something. Че это мяч? Какой он? Okay, whose towel? Here's a neuter. Чё это полотенце? Чё это полотенце? Какое оно? Какое оно? Whose shirt? Чья это рубашка? Какая она? What kind of shirt is it? Какая она? Number five. Чё это ключ? Чё это ключ? Whose key? is this, or whose key is that, right? It could be either, depending on the context. Uh, okay, what kind of key is it? Kakoyon, kakoyon. 
и соп, Гюрер. Чё это мыло? Какое оно? Number seven. Че это шампунь? Use shampoo. Che at the shampooing. Kakoyon. What kind of shampoo is it? Number eight. Chio at Adiala. Whose blanket? Whose cover? Kakoya anoa. Number nine. Uh, whose bed sheet is this? Che at the prostinia. Okay, that's a soft feminine, so we need to ask Kakaya ana. Kakaya ana. Okay, next exercise, 9C, uh, just again, getting more practice. Let's ask things, uh, what, let's throw in some past tense verbs, right? Talk about something we saw yesterday. Yeah, whose dictionary was that yesterday? Che at the will, slava arvchira, right? Talking about the past tense, we just need to throw in the past tense verb, right? Bil, buila, buila, buili, or whatever. Um, okay, let's say this was my new dictionary. Это был мой новый словар. Это был мой новый словар. And this is a sweet dictionary, so we're going to express amazement and say ничего себе, ничего себе. That's an, an idiom that really makes no sense trying to translate it literally. It means something like of nothing to myself, right? Nothing to myself. So uh, I don't know exactly how this came about, but again, it's just a set phrase. Uh, some phrases like that, it doesn't really make much sense to try to understand them literally. It's just a it's just an expression. Nichi voicebia, right? Wow. Okay, we'll learn more about that grammar later. Uh, for now it's just a phrase you can learn. Okay, uh, so let's ask whose car was that yesterday? Chata Bula Machina Chira. Cha at the Bula Machina Chira. Uh that was my new car. At the Bula Maya Novaya Machina. Ничего себе. Wow, that was a sweet car. Okay, number three. Uh, whose, whose easy chair was that yesterday? Чё это было кресло вчера? Чё это было кресло вчера? Whose armchair was that uh, I was admiring yesterday? Uh, that, was my, that was my new armchair. Это было моё новое кресло. Ничего себе. Wow. Okay. Number four. Whose book was that yesterday? Ча это была книга вчера. Ча это была книга вчера. That was my new book. Это была моя новая книга. Ничего себе. I'm so jealous. Okay. Number five. Uh, whose phone was that yesterday? Че это был телефон вчера. Чей это был телефон вчера? Это был мой новый телефон. Ничего себе! Okay, a quick uh, little aside here. We now know two ways to express possession, right? Think back a few days ago, we learned the у idiom, right? У меня есть, у тебя есть, у него есть, uh, у нас есть, у вас есть, у них есть. Right, uh, and we learned that as a kind of somewhat peculiar Russian idiom, at me is something. Okay, now we've learned a, uh, a second way to express possession, right? Just using a possessive adjective, right? Like, that's mine, right? That's my car. So we can use those to get away, essentially, to get across essentially the same idea. Um, uh, now, the only reason I mention this is that um, since these possessive adjectives are more familiar to us from English, uh, sometimes they tend to be overused. Uh, so it's just wor worth keeping in mind that you can throw in one of these ooh expressions uh, in place of a word like moi or maya and so forth, right? So let's just see some examples. Now, again, if we're asking about possession, we really need to use the ooh uh, or to ask a question about it uh, in the sense that well, if we're asking a question like, do you have a car, right? Not, is this your car, but just this kind of existential question, do you have a car? У тебя есть машина? That's really the only way to ask that question. And again, we include the есть, because that's the point of the question. Да, есть. Yes, I do. I do have a car. Or again, there is a car at me. У меня есть машина. 
У меня есть машина. That's the full version of the, that statement, right? I do have a car. At me is a car. Now look at the second uh, row of examples. Мой компьютер плохой. My computer is bad. Now, to say, that can sound uh, slightly in Russian as if you're emphasizing ownership, right? To say that a bit more neutrally, you can say компьютер у меня плохой. Uh, maybe it's something more like in English, the computer I have is bad, right? Um, or again, just simply my computer is bad. Um, whereas if you say in Russian, мой компьютер плохой, мой компьютер плохой, it sounds a bit as if you're emphasizing my computer versus maybe your computer or someone else's computer. Okay, so that's a somewhat subtle difference perhaps, and maybe it's not the most important thing for beginners to uh, pick up on, but just um, something to think about. Um, now, if we're contrasting, right, my computer versus your computer, uh, then we might, yeah, it's a good place to use these possessive adjectives. Мой компьютер плохой, а твой хороший. Now, here's a nice uh, propaganda poster. Наше дело правое, враг будет разбит. Our cause is just. Наше дело правое. Okay, note there we have the special modifier, наше, our cause. And then правое, we haven't seen that adjective, but that's just a normal adjective. So we see the uh, good old adjectival endings we learned uh, the other day. This is actually a famous phrase. This was um, read by the announcer um, uh, on the uh, Soviet radio. This is what he said when he ended the announcement of the surprise Nazi invasion of the Soviet Union. So, so this was how a lot of Russians would have learned of this surprise attack and, of course, the beginning of this terrible war right, was by hearing it announced on the radio. You can find recordings of that on YouTube. Uh, maybe, I think some point later we'll talk more about that phrase in, at the very beginning of book two. Наше дело правое, враг будет разбит. Our cause is just, the enemy will be crushed. Враг is enemy, будет, will be, разбит means crushed. Okay, next exercise 9C. Let's just fill in some more questions, uh, just getting practice. Um, okay, so we want to say, whose book is this? Is it yours or someone else's? Okay, чья это книга? Твоя или его? Okay, let's answer the question and say, it's not his book. Это не его книга, она моя. It's my book. Okay, so again, just following... Uh, the gender of whatever it is we're talking about. Okay, let's talk about computer. Чей это компьютер? Твой или его? Это не его компьютер. Он мой. It's mine. Okay, let's talk about расписание. Whose schedule is, is this or is that? Чё это расписание? Твоё или её? Is it yours or hers? This isn't her schedule. Это не ее расписание. Оно мое. It neuter is mine. Number three, кошелек, which means a wallet or a, a little money purse of some sort. Чей это кошелек? Okay, is it yours or theirs? Твой или их? Okay, let's say it, this isn't their wallet. At the near ich kashiliok on moi masculine on moi. Number four, whose purse? Chata sumka, chata sumka. Is it yours or hers? Tvaya ili yi yua. Okay, it's not her purse. At the near yi yua sumka. I'm going to say sukno for some reason, which means cloth. Um, anyway, это не ее сумка, она моя, она моя. Number five, uh, whose laundry? Чё это белье? Чё это белье? Is it yours or his? Твоё или его? Okay, this isn't his laundry. Это не его белье. 
It's mine. I know my your. Okay, let's switch the ones we're using. Let's practice Nasha or Vasha, right? Is it ours or yours? Um, okay, so uh, let's see. Let's start out talking about Zont. Ch Chant is Zont. Chant is Zont. Whose umbrella? Okay, let's ask, is it ours or yours? And again, well, again, the uh, Vash could mean, is it, is it your plural or is it your singular, but being polite, right? We always have to remember that the all these forms of vui can mean either of those things. Okay, so we're talking about zont here, so we need the masculine. Nash livash. Nash livash. Okay, let's say this isn't our umbrella, it's yours. Et nash zont on vash. On vash. Okay, what about ne the next word, which can mean place or maybe seat here, would make more sense. Is this your seat? Whose seat is this? Cho et miesta. Cho et miesta. Nasha ili vasha. Okay, this is an our seat. Et ni nasha miesta. Et ni nasha miesta. Ano vasha. Number eight, whose dictionary? Che et slavar. Chetislavar, Nash ili vash. It's not our dictionary. At the Nash Slavar, on vash. It's yours. Number nine, whose pencil? Cheta karandash. Again, masculine. Nash ili vash. It's not our pencil. At the Nash karandash, on vash. It's yours. Number ten, whose car? Chata machina, chata machina, ours or yours? Nasha ili vasha. Et ni nasha machina. It's not our car. Ana vasha. And uh, here's a great paslovitsa, right? Remember, paslovitsa means a, a folk, a proverb or a folk saying. Maya chatas krayu. It means my um, cabin, my hut is at the edge of the village. And I put that here because we see an example, maya chata, right? My um, hut, which is feminine, my hut is at the edge of the village, meaning everyone else in the village can go to hell, the whole village can burn down, I don't care what happens, I'm over here sitting pretty on the edge of the village. Okay, so maybe a bit funny, but also rather, um, uh, well, a rather selfish little proverb. Uh, one more um, word we can throw out for the next exercise is vot, which I usually call that the showing word. So we can compare it to atha, which is a more just kind of neutral pointing word, right? This is a book, that's a book, just kind of pointing at something using atha, which as we know, never changes its form. Uh, now, if we say what, it means we're really showing someone something. We're really pointing it out in a very emphatic way, like, hey, look at this. Um, so that's an important word to learn, what, as in this poster, what nasha pribuy, here's our prophet. Um, it's kind of a strange poster. Uh, by the way, pribuy there is feminine despite ending, ending in a soft consonant. We're going to talk about uh, nouns like that later in book two. Okay, so here's some examples of what. Vot maya novoy machina, right? Hey, look, here's my new car, right? We're using the showing word. Or vot eta harosha idea. Now we're combining the two to say very emphatically, now there's a good idea. Wow, look at that. Vot eta novoya, sorry, harosha idea. Okay, so let's uh, throw that in. And 9e, just practicing saying, uh, well, answering questions like, у тебя есть книга? Do you have a book? Есть. Вот моя книга. Here's my book. Um, okay, so let's just answer the questions. У тебя есть окно? Do you, singular, have a window? Есть. Вот мое окно. Вот мое окно. Нюрю. У нас есть машина? Do we have a car? Okay, we're being a bit forgetful. Let's say, yes, we have a car. Here's our car. Yest. Vod nasha mashina. Vod nasha mashina. Number three. Do they have a bicycle? Unich yest velociped. 
Yeast. Yeah, they do. Vod ich velocipied. Okay, now remember the ich, we don't need to change it all. Uh, here's their bicycle. Number four, univo yeast adiala. Uh, does he have a blanket? Yeast. Vod yivo adiala. Here's his blanket. Vod yivo adiala. Number five, univo yeast slavar. Does she have a dictionary? Yeast. Vod yivo slavar. Right, here's her dictionary. Number six, uh, do I have a seat? У меня есть место. Есть. Вот твое место. Right here is your place. Let's look quickly at a kind of one-act um, ideological drama that you can play out with a partner, right? Uh, so choose the, between two roles, right? Communist number one and communist number two. Communist number one, communist number two. And pick an item of possession. You see a word bank over there with a few ideas. And depending on its gender, right, you're going to have to go through this dialogue and choose the forms in the highlighted there in the gray according to the gender of whatever it is you're talking about. So it's a good example of how, again, you've got to always be keeping in mind when you're talking about a thing uh, or a person, you've got to be using all your adjectives in the proper form, right, to agree with that noun you're speaking of. So, for example, if we take quartier, an apartment, Right, there was a serious apartment shortage in the Soviet Union, so uh, getting a good apartment was always a serious matter. And a lot of old apartments, they were sort of sprawling uh, apartments occupied by the nobility. For example, they were broken into um, smaller apartments, uh, and an apartment like that was called a kommunalka, which was short for kommunalna kvartira, a communal apartment, kommunalna kvartira. And, of course, that meant uh, usually one bathroom, one kitchen, and uh, each individual family or couple or whoever had their own room or sometimes a little piece of a room that had been broken up using partition. So, basically, it was total bedlam. Uh, you'll see this in Soviet movies quite often, and we'll talk about it more later. Okay, but for now, let's just look at the dialogue. Let's take quartier. It's feminine. So, we've got to run through this and keep feminine endings everywhere. Okay, Kamunis Namaraidin uh, asks, Tsha uh, de quartira, whose apartment is this? Kamunis Namaraidin, number two, Kamunis number two says, At the Maya quartira, it's my apartment. Kamunis Namaraidin doesn't like that too much. He says, Nia, that the Nia, Tvaya quartira, Ana Maya, Ana Maya, it's my apartment. Okay, so they're both um, confused ideologically. Tvaya, niet, anamaya, right? Yours? No, it's mine, anamaya. Kamunis number again responds, maya, maya. Okay, now we reach a breaking point, right? Uh, the sort of dialectic proceeds, right? We had thesis, antithesis, antithesis, and now we get the synthesis, right? Ladna tavarish, okay, comrade, at the nasha quartira. Right? It's our apartment. And we've gone from the uh, egotism of the capitalist world, right? Mine, 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 towards the collective, right? Mui, at the Nasha Quartier. It's our apartment. Kommunist number Raidin says, Da Tavarish, at the Pravda, right? He immediately sees the truth, right? Ana Nasha, it's ours. Torchna. Uh, and now we get a little. Uh, reprisal here. This isn't his apartment. It's not her apartment. It's not their apartment. It's our common apartment. It's our shared or communal apartment. And by the way, that's a new adjective, obshi. We won't be using that a lot in this book right now, but it's just an ordinary um, uh, adjective. But note that because its final stem consonant is sh, it looks a lot like haroshi, right? And meaning that the masculine Form is affected by the seven-letter spelling rule, and the neuter form is affected by the five-letter spelling rule, just like we saw with Haroshi the other day. Okay, so Torchna, etnye yvo kvartira, etnye yyo kvartira, etnye ich kvartira. Note that all three of those examples, yvo, yyo, ich, never change, so we have no choice to make there. Etna nasha obshaya kvartira. Okay, the last point today is a fairly easy one to make. Uh, there are two words 
two words for now in Russian, сейчас and теперь, right? So is there a difference? Uh, sometimes not really, honestly. I, I, I always say there sort of is a difference, and then I see example after example where they're used almost interchangeably, especially if you go back a ways reading some older texts. I've noticed that a lot lately. Okay, so I don't want to over, overdo this point, but there is a distinction to be made. You can think of сейчас as being just your neutral word for now, right? So сейчас can mean now, just generally. Often, it's the case that теперь means now in an emphatic sense, in the sense that you're contrasting it with the past, right? So something like if we said yesterday it was sunny, but now it's raining, right? We introduce that kind of contrast. We're more likely to hear uh, теперь. And that helps explain why we often get the combination no теперь, right? right? We're getting a contrast with but, and because of that emphasis, uh, we often hear tipir instead of uh, сейчас. Uh, if we look at this hoster, uh, again, propaganda, Tsarske polki i krasne armie. Okay, th so these are the uh, the Tsarist regiments and the Red Army. Now, by the way, Tsarske polki, that's the plural form, right? So we haven't learned those endings yet. Uh, polki is the plural of polk. Uh, so Tsarske polki, on the one hand, and then on the other hand, we see the Krasnaya Armia. Okay, and we're seeing here Zashtos Srajalis Prejdie, right? What they fought for before or previously. And on the right, Zashto Srajalse Tipier, what they're fighting for now. Um, right, so the uh, Tsarist regiment fought for all sorts of backwards uh, ideas, right? And, uh, of course, now the Red Army is fighting for things like Svoboda, Chlieb, Nauka, uh, and so forth, right? So freedom, bread, and science, right? That's what we're fighting for now, right? So there's a clear contrast between the past and uh, what's happening now, Tipier. A few more examples. Boris just doma. Is Boris, is Boris home right now? Okay, so that's just a neutral сейчас, right? Okay, but now we get some emphasis, a bit of contrast. We say, Rancho en Bildoma, right? He was here earlier. No tipier niet. Right? Rancho means earlier, before. Rancho en Bildoma, no tipier niet. Or, Machina bola novaya, no tipier anastaraya. It used to be new, but now it's old. Okay, so let's uh, just do a quick exercise here and uh, practice uh, opposites. Um, so, for example, computer tibia haroshi le plachoi. Okay, let's say it used to be one thing, but now it's the other, right? Rancho on bul plachoi, no tipier on haroshi. Okay, uh, let's try to, let's be uh, optimistic, right? Let's assume that things are getting better, I guess, in this exercise. Okay, let's ask about the расписание. What was our schedule like? Расписание у тебя трудное или легкое? Was your schedule or is your schedule hard or easy? Okay, previously, before it was hard, but now it's easy. Раньше оно было трудное, но теперь оно легкое. Okay, again, neuter, 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 because we're talking about raspisanya. Number two, komnata, feminine. Komnata u tibia barshaya ili marinkaya. Well, before, previously it was big. Well, previously it was small, now it's big. Things have gotten better. Rancha na bula marinkaya, no tibier na barshaya. Okay, number three, telefon, masculine. Okay, we've moved up in the world. It used to be bad, but now it's good. Number four, feminine. Is our work interesting or boring? Okay, feminine. Rancha ana Скучная, но теперь 
Anna interiasnaya. Okay, number five, uh, neuter, neon, aknoa. Aknoa vas barsoya ili malinkaya. Okay, is, it, is your window big or small? Okay, earlier, it, before it was small, but now it's big. Rancha uh, anoa, anoa bila barsoya, sorry. Rancha anoa bila malinkaya, right? Before it used, to, where it used to be small. No tipier anoa barsoya, but now it's big. Okay, your bike. Is it expensive or cheap? Tvoj velosiped. Dragoj ili dišovoj? Well, it used to be cheap, but now it's expensive. Ranče on bil dišovoj, no tipier on dragoj. Okay, finally, vaša adježda. Your clothing. Vaša adježda. Dragaje ili dišovoje? Well, it used to be cheap, but now it's expensive. Раньше она была дешевая, но теперь она дорогая. Okay, last exercise is just conversational, so uh, you can just think of examples yourself, but let's look at the model. Моя книга новая и интересная, а твоя старая и неинтересная. Right, so just compare some different things owned by different people. Or maybe think of uh, your neighbor or your friend or whatever and imagine comparing uh, your things versus their things. Uh, you can also try doing this in the past or the future, right? Remember in the past, we need to supply the right verb, right? Bil, bila, buila, or buili. Um, although I guess here we wouldn't be using the plural forms yet. Uh, or in the future, right? Uh, we could say budget, right? What kind of uh, room will you have? What kind of uh, backpack will you have? We just need a future tense form of the verb like budget. Okay, to close out today's lesson, let's see if you can read uh, Russian cursive. Hopefully you've been practicing your own cursive. Uh, and remember, it's important to be able to read it too, obviously. And as I may have mentioned before, not only in order to read actually actual handwritten cursive, but also to read uh, like fonts that are stylized to look like cursive. You see that quite often in, in uh, Russia. Uh, okay, so uh, by the way, here's a nice painting uh, called A Letter from the Front, Pismo s Fronta. The front is the front, right? Uh, this is a 1946 painting by uh, Laktionov, is the familia of the artist, right? So here we see Looks like one injured soldier who's healing on the uh, uh, back home, and they received a letter from the front. Okay, so to practice our cursive, let's read a letter written to the front. Uh, I saw this in the uh, the memorial, the World War II Memorial Museum in uh, in Moscow. I just took a picture of it. Okay, let's see if we can read this. Zdrastvuit. Okay, I think they forgot the little kid, uh, Lilia is her name. I think she forgot to write the yeah there. Okay, well, that's kind of a long word, so we'll forgive her for that. So it should be Zdrastvuitia. Uh, or maybe she meant to write Zdrastvui. Uh, but you know what? How can we, here's a good example. How can we tell she meant to write Zdrastvuitia? Well, we have to see how she's addressing this guy throughout the letter. And if we look, we see Vui, 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 right? We'll see in a moment. Okay, so if she's using V to address uh, the recipient of this letter, then we need to write a Zdrastvuitia, and that makes it clear she just left off the, the yeah. Zdrastvuitia, Dyadi Valodia. Hello, Uncle Valodia. Okay, Valodia, uh, what name is that? Well, that's one of those short form names that uh, we mentioned a couple of days ago. Uh, you may be able to guess the full form of this name. Or maybe not. The, the the full form is Vladimir. Vladimir. Okay, so again that this word this term Valodia is just a a set form. That's the way to refer uh in a friendly manner to someone named Vla Vladimir. Uh okay, anyway. Zdrasvite Dyadi Valodia. Shira ya konchila troy class. Yesterday I finished the second grade. I graduated the second from the second grade. 
Сколько вы убили немцев? How many Germans have you killed? Okay, uh, now again, the grammar here is something else. Uh, well, we can't understand much of it now. We're just trying to read the cursive. Скорка means how many. Немцев is genitive plural, meaning how many of Germans, how many Germans вы убили, have you killed? Зоя беспокоится, meaning Зоя is worried. I'm guessing that's her sister who's uh, either married to Володя or maybe they're engaged, right? And she's just calling him uncle. Uh, the terms uncle and aunt are sometimes used to by children uh, to re refer to adults they don't really know. Uh, uh, anyway, uh, Zoya uh, беспокоится, Zoya is worried. Не получает от вас писем. She's not receiving letters from you. Не получает от вас писем. Zoya скоро пойдет на работу. Zoya will soon head off for work. Живем хорошо. We're living well. Как вы доехали? How did you make it? Or meaning something like, how was your trip? Literally, how did you reach the front? How did you make it to the front? We're assuming he's somewhere on the front. Целую Лилия. Literally, I kiss, meaning kisses Лилия, from Лилия. Привет от всех. Hello from everyone. Okay, I'll read through it one more time, just practicing. Uh, don't worry too much about the grammar, obviously, just whether or not you can read the text and pronounce it. Здравствуйте, дяди Володя. Вчера я кончила второй класс. Сколько вы убили немцев? Зоя беспокоится, не получает от вас писем. Зоя скоро пойдет на работу. Живем хорошо. Как вы доехали? Целую. Лилия, привет от всех. Okay, on that note, we'll call it a day. Uh, until tomorrow, uh, до свидания, товарищи.